we are gonna jump into Ableton Live and we're gonna try to create a metal track using virtual instruments, see what happens and hopefully it's gonna sound good. And if it doesn't sound good, then at least we tried. It's not something that I do all the time, like using virtual guitar and stuff like that, but I think it's a nice challenge for me to try and uh, like create a full track only using those virtual instrument stuff anyway. Thanks a lot, Pixel Junkie, for the subscription. Oh, let me show you something just for you. Right. It's only the beginning. I'm going to find even better stuff for the next time. Okay, here we are in front of nothing. <laughs> All right, I already set up this project. Try and create a simple bit. Okay, very simple bit for the beginning. Let's try to bring a bass. So for the bass, I'm using um, this incredible library that's called Gin Bass. It's made by Ermin Handovic and it's very gentle bass. It's a bass that's basically based on the popular dark glass type sound. Let's do like a running. No, that's too fast. Okay, for the guitar, I, I kind of want to first create a clean guitar sound. So let's duplicate this track here have a clean guitar and distorted guitar. So for the guitar, I'm using Shred Edge Free. I've been using it a few times in the past and I think it's pretty good. Like there are some things that I wouldn't know how to do specifically, like basically guitar leads and guitar solo stuff, but um, with like rhythm stuff and riffs, I think it's pretty good. For the drums, I use two libraries. I use the GGD Modern Massive for the overheads. So that means all cymbals. For the kick, I use Super Hard Drummer. For the snare, I use Super Hard Drummer. And for the toms, I also use Super Hard Drummer. And as you can see, it is not optimized at all. <laughs> but that's the way I like to do it. Why am I doing this? Because I really like the cymbals on Modern and Massive. They work really well with my mixes. And uh, I much prefer kick snare to toms in, in Super Hard Drummer. I'm routing some of it into a parallel compressor. Okay, let's go for the clean guitar sound. There's one I like. Oh, that might be this one. La pomme est rouge. Oui, very good. I say that all the time. Like, as soon as I wake up, I'm, I'm saying la pomme est rouge. And most French people I know say it all the time. So that's why I'm going to try and say it more often. If that's, the only, <laughs> if that's the only thing you know in French, I probably say it all the time then. La pomme est fucking rouge. The apple is fucking red, my friend. Let's call this track the apple is fucking red. There's a trick that I do every time I'm working with virtual instruments. It's a very nice trick, but basically I'm using a delay on the bass and guitar track. So what's happening is by setting this property here to minus 23, it's shifting the whole MIDI track 23 milliseconds in the past. The reason I'm doing this is so I can write my bass right on the grid, but then the kick drum attack does not clash with the bass guitar attack anymore. So I think it's a pretty nice trick. I'm doing it for the guitar as well. Okay. There's some delay on it. Let's bring some sort of post metal lead. I feel like this track could start very calm with like this clean arpeggio. Then we start introducing some post metal atmospheres. And then at some point the track starts going a bit crazy with like heavy riff. So everyone in the chat can start head banging at home. And then after that we calm down and we go back to the clean guitar sound. Okay, that could be our way into a more heavy section of the track here. Let's try and write the heavy drums first. Seriously, if you have to learn one thing from this stream, look at the title of the track and then thank me later. There's something to it, there's something to it.
something like this. I'm not sure about the last note. Let's try to resample the guitar and then we're gonna try it and put it in reverse just before the section hits here. Okay, try to move on to the next riff. Let's try and make a breakdown. Breakdown. Everyone going crazy in the chat, hitting each other in the pit or whatever you're doing. <laughs> I've been in, a, in the mosh pit probably once in my life. One of my first live shows in Perpignan, let's say 15 years ago. There was like a, this hardcore band from Portugal. We were like 10 people in the audience. Five of them were my friends and we were pretty drunk. So we went into the mosh pit and it was pretty ridiculous. From my perspective, it was awesome. And I felt like I was doing all the mosh pit moves and stuff. But from the perspective of everyone else, it was probably terrible. <laughs> But I had fun, I had fun. That was the only time I went into the mosh pit. Uh, you know what, let's add a crash. Let's just take this one. Okay, let's try and add it right here. Let's try and add some velocities as well because all the notes have the same velocity so it, it feels like very robotic. Thank you very much, Mr. Dead Toast. I love it. Okay, what I would like to do here is first save the track. Maybe I can do like some sort of a riff on top of everything, like uh, some sort of arpeggio, but with the guitar, something like this. Okay, let's try and add a electronic hat right over here. Like some sort of, uh, let's try this one. Okay, let's bring back the clean riff from the beginning. Maybe we found the drums at first. Same thing, but move everything except the cymbal and snap back by one. Eighth note, like basically shifting everything can try. Maybe not the bass, maybe just the guitar. Sounds pretty cool. Okay, let's add some fucking hats. Oh, the hats are sidechained. Let's take them out of the group. So yeah, I have like this uh, sidechain group where everything that falls into this group is sidechained by this track here. This track is basically just a simple drum rack with two very short hi-hats. It's the same sample and basically it's being fed the MIDI data from the drums. So every time there's a kick drum or a snare drum, or a snare drum, sorry. Every time there's a kick drum or a snare, a snare drum, <laughs> That was hard to say, I don't know why. It's triggering those samples and then it's basically triggering the sidechain compressor. The snake drum. <laughs> You've never heard of the snake drum? When COVID will end and all the bands will start touring again, all of them will have a snake drum hiding on stage. <laughs> a solid snake drum. You know what? I would like to try and... Something like this and then find a different melody here. I think I have something, I need to improve it, obviously, but it could be the basis of something that's actually cool. And I can bring this note here.
keep expecting the post rock tremor of, of Brooklyn. Yeah, well, you know what? Let's do it. The problem is usually when I try and create those kind of tremolo guitars, I use a different library that I did not install on the PC. But you know what? Let's try and do it with the Jupyter library. Maybe we can make that work. Not too bad. Weird sound, but maybe it, it, maybe it works. wasn't too bad. Maybe I can repeat that again. sort of fade that could be a good way to end the track the question is do we want to end the track here yeah the track is already 3 minutes 20 that's uh, that's pretty big there's a part of me that says that it's strange to finish a metal track with some clean sounds but then again we're here to push boundaries so that might be something cool if it ends now it feels like you need something more you know <laughs> but that might be a good thing it's a nice trick to get the the listener like hooked into your album Okay, guys, I've been streaming for four hours. Now, what we can do is listen from the top.
it's pretty cool. It's probably a few details that I would improve over time, but the track as a whole makes sense. So I'm pretty happy about that. You know what? I think we're gonna end here. It was a great stream, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very, very much. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.